Hello and welcome to Game Theory. I'm your host, Sam Vecini. Today, we're going to break down one of the most interesting players in the NBA currently, Cam Thomas from the Brooklyn Nets. He'll be returning from an ankle injury that he suffered in Brooklyn's eighth game, seemingly later this week. But before he does, I kind of wanted to talk about his breakout this season as he's averaging 27 points per game, shooting 47.9% from the field, 32% from three, 85% from the line, also thrown in four rebounds and two assists per game as well. He was one of the real talking points of the early season. And I kind of want to dive into his game as a whole because I find Cam Thomas to be this incredibly fascinating player, right? He went later in his draft class than what his numbers as a freshman at LSU would have typically indicated. He went 27th overall to the Brooklyn Nets, despite the fact that he was an efficient scorer as a freshman in the SEC that averaged over 20 points per game. The number of guys that were able to do that are actually quite small at a high major level. Cam Thomas was one of the most impressive volume scorers we've seen, but his overall game left a lot to be desired. So as I watched this tape and I picked a game against the Boston Celtics, which I believe was the Nets sixth game of the year. I picked this game because I thought it was the most indicative of his overall season stats. He went 11 for 24 in this game, had 27 points, exactly what his season average is. He shot about the same that he has shot from the field over the course of the season in this game. He shot 33% from three in this game, 32% three-point shooter. I figured statistically it would be the most indicative. On top of it, it's against a good team. And ultimately, a lot of what Cam Thomas's flaws are, are things that will show up against a good team. So it's worth taking a look to see if he's grown in some ways defensively, as well as taking a look at if he is ready to play an integral role as a leading scorer on a good team. And I'll be honest, I came away a little bit less impressed than what I hope to be, but we'll dive into the tape and we'll talk about it now. So here we go. We've got Cam Thomas here. For people who have not watched the Brooklyn Nets yet this season, Cam Thomas is number 24. He's a six foot four ish guard. Uh, like I said, went to LSU, has always been an elite level scorer at every single level. You can look at high school, you can look at AAU, you can look at college, and now he's averaging 27 points per game in the NBA. He's the epitome of a professional scorer. So why is he not quite as rated, let's say, as potentially some others? We'll dive into that throughout the video, and we'll dive in also to what makes him so special as a scorer. He is unbelievable in some respects as a shot maker. So uh, I know that he has talked uh, throughout his career a bit about embodying much of what Kobe Bryant brought to the table. You can see that in his tape in many ways with some of the ways particularly that he gets into that mid-range area. So let's dive in. Let's talk a little bit about what we see here from Cam Thomas of the Brooklyn Nets. This one here, he's just going to get this reversal. He's being guarded by Jason Tatum, and then he's going to take this screen. One thing with Cam Thomas is if a team switches a big on to him, the odds are he's going to try and attack. He's going to try and take advantage of what he sees as a mismatch even if it's not always a mismatch, in my opinion. Al Horford is a good on-ball defender for a big, even at his age. I wouldn't necessarily be attacking him uh, regularly unless I was like one of the truly elite players in the league. But as you'll see throughout this video, Cam Thomas sees a big and he goes for it. And that's just his style of play, right? So here, Cam is just going to pull up with you know, 12 seconds left on the shot clock here. And what I want you to see is that he's very capable getting into his pull up from a lot of different angles, a lot of different footworks here. He's going to try and change pace on guys. That's what he really excels at. He loves to try and change pace, get guys in between their feet and in between their footwork off balance just slightly, and then pull up from the mid range from three, wherever he can. Right. So, this one here, he's just going to put it between the legs and he's going to step back. He's going to miss the three. I'm going to be honest with you. There's a lot of tape to go through. I grabbed 10 minutes of tape here and 
we need to zoom through some of it on some level. I know I'm talking a lot here to start. I'm kind of trying to set the table. But another good thing about this tape is that some of this stuff can just get zoomed through because there's not a lot to break down schematically. So here we go. This time, Cam Thomas over here picks up Jason Tatum in transition. Tatum recognizes it. I think this is a good defensive possession from Cam Thomas, and I want to call out the good ones when they happen. Uh, I think that's the most fair way to go about it here. So what are we looking at here? We're looking at Kristaps Porzingis. He's going to come. He's going to set just a screen. Tatum is going to decide to reject it, right? Because he wants the matchup against Cam Thomas. That's something that is abundantly clear throughout this tape, is that the Celtics were trying to attack Cam Thomas defensively. And Tatum doesn't really want this screen. He decides, I want to keep Cam Thomas on me. Thomas does a good job getting his hand up, contests the shot, does great work. Another piece of Cam Thomas's game that is a bit funky right now is his passing. Uh, he's not a guy that is without vision, but he regularly just kind of chooses not to pass. So, Early in this game, really through like two and a half quarters, I tracked how many front court passes he made. So passes that he made after passing half court. He made one prior to this, uh, kind of off of a steal. He was in transition. He threw the ball kind of back for an open three to one of his teammates. He's not going to make a pass again in the, in the front court, I think for another five minutes. So his second half court pass came at 524. I'll call that out when it happens. Um, but here you go. We've got Cam Thomas. Again, this is just a simple screening action here. He loves to take these drags, these double drags in transition. This is kind of a little like drag slip almost from McHale where he's going to kind of come through the play. And they're going to switch it. And this is going to result in, again, a matchup that Cam Thomas wants. He wants the big man, Kristaps Porzingis, here on him because he thinks he can break him down and get him to where he can get an open shot. So, again, between the legs. This is 16 seconds left on the shot clock. Pull up three. Cash, he's capable of this stuff, right? Cam Thomas is a really, really ridiculous shot maker. Uh, his percentages have never been amazing, but Cam Thomas can really shoot the ball. You give him that space, that ball's going to go up, and a lot of the time it's going to go in. Is it going to go in enough? Fair question. But this one here, Kristaps gives him, I don't know, what do you want to call that? It's called four feet of space, five feet of space, maybe. When you account for the closeout, it's not a ton of space because Kristaps has like a seven foot six wingspan. But Cam Thomas, shot mechanics wise as well, while we're here. Very high release point, right? Really elevates into the shot as well. Gets a ton of upward burst on that shot to where. Even this closeout from Kristaps, which is okay, given the amount of space that he gave him, Cam can shoot over the top of these guys. He has good balance, good rhythm through the shot. And he's able to cash that. Next possession down the court. You'll see a lot of the time that Boston and Brook Brooklyn in this game particularly had Cam guarding Drew Holiday, and that Drew, recognizing this and recognizing the potential for mismatches, would go screen for his teammates, right? So here he's going to go screen for Jalen Brown, and they're just going to attack Cam Thomas again. I think Cam Thomas does a reasonable job here. He does a good job staying in front of Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown is obviously a very real athlete. Great job here with the help. making sure that there are bodies in the lane so that Jalen can't just blow by. Having said that, I think that this isn't much of a contest here from Cam. I know that 
you know, he does an okay job staying in front. And I think that's worth commending, but this is a shot that I think Jalen Brown isn't really bothered by when it comes to Cam Thomas. I think this is not a great shot selection from Jalen Brown, but I do think that he's not really getting bothered necessarily by the contest here. And that's something that'll come up. Cam's tools defensively are not particularly great. So this is again, next possession down the court offensively. We got a cross match, right? So look at how the Celtics pick up in transition. As soon as we get all five on the court, we've got, Tatum on Dinwiddie. We've got Drew on, I believe that's Dorian Finney-Smith. We've got Jalen, it looks like, picking up in transition. we got Chris Stops on the corner. And that's going to leave Horford out to Cam Thomas. And again, you're going to see, he just thinks he can attack. Cam thinks that he can attack these mismatches all the time. And it's not always ideal, unfortunately. He's not always capable of getting where he needs to go in these circumstances because he doesn't have a crazy amount of burst, unfortunately. That's just kind of not his game. It's not a big piece of who he is as a player. He is more of a technician. Uh, He's more of a guy who has incredible footwork, unbelievable, plays with really good pace, plays with the ability to get guys off balance. But from an overall athletic tools perspective, you're not talking about a guy that's necessarily got a ton of upward bursts, right? Uh, so far this season at the rim in half court settings, Cam Thomas is making 50% of his shots only as a 50.9 true shooting percentage uh, at the basket in half court settings. This is a place where I think if Cam is going to be a primary scoring option on a very good team, he's got to improve. He can't continue to be a 50% shooter at the rim because it's just really hard to live off of the diet of the style of jump shots that he has. So just again, from a technical perspective, you love the quick little jab and go here. Drew Holiday doesn't even really come to help, as you'll see here. He just kind of thinks that Al Horford's going to be able to handle this, right? He's not going to help off the kick out. He's going to be there for the rebound, and Horford does handle it. It's a big piece of Cam Thomas's needed improvement. He's got to be able to knock down shots at the rim. Again, another cross-match situation, this play, right? 636 left in the first quarter. I believe this is off of an offensive rebound. Kristaps gets cross-matched here. On to Cam Thomas. Thomas comes around. He gets the ball. And again, he sees big on guard mismatch. I'm going to try and get by. Smokes the layup, right? Like he actually does a pretty good job creating an angle here on Kristaps. I love this move to snake around Kristaps' body, use his own body almost as a shield, uses Cam, Cam uses his own body as a shield, goes around Kristaps, makes it so that he's cutting off the angle for the shot blocker, right? But again, he just doesn't have a ton of upward lift going toward the rim, right? I do think this is just beautiful technically to get around and create this potential shot and to get a clean look with his left hand at the rim. I love that he's confident in his left hand at the rim, but he misses, right? And those are shots that he's going to have to make in order to become that kind of high level scorer with the kind of efficiency that is necessary for him to be what he's capable of. Next one down the court. This is just a switch situation, right? So Thomas gets cross-matched here onto Jalen Brown. Help comes, knowing that this is a mismatch in on the block with Cam Thomas and Jalen Brown. We'll see a little bit more of that throughout the game. 
Jalen recognizes where the help has come from, hits the quick kick out. And then we've got this big, enormous open lane here for Jason Tatum to drive. That is Cam Thomas's guy at this point and help because the way that they have matched up at this point, in order to get the close out, they've executed an X out, right? So corner help man who came over to help on the post up is going to go here. We're going to get a close out onto the corner onto Al Horford there, which means Cam Thomas is responsible up here now for the X out. He goes back to the corner, which is just instinctually not where he needs to go, and then just completely ball watches on the offensive rebound, right? So let's run that through again. Cuts off the angle for Jason Tatum. That's good, but look at him here. He's got to get a body on somebody. Got to get a body on one of these two, right? Doesn't his man gets the offensive rebound Tatum miraculously smokes the layup, but Horford puts it back in next one here. First quarter coming to an end. And this is just ridiculous shot making, right? This is completely absurd shot making from Cam Thomas. So what is what is the action here at the end of the first? Because, you know, this is what Cam can do. You can give him the ball at the end of the first quarter and you're going to get a reasonable shot almost every time, right? So this is, I'm almost going to call these like staggered on balls. I don't, I, this is definitely not a double drag necessarily, but we're going to see Mikhail Bridges set like a quick little ghost action. And then we're going to see, can't quite tell who that man in the corner is, but he's going to come up and try and set another screen. Thomas, by this point, has denied the second screen. And he's just decided that he's going to attack because he sees that his man, Drew Holiday, got all the way over there when getting through off of the switch that he executed off of Mikhail Bridges. And Cam Thomas sees that angle and he's just going to go, right? He's just going to attack. Kind of puts his body into Sam Hauser here. I think this is just really, really smart stuff here. I think he absolutely sells the shit out of this play. First and foremost, and that's credit to him. But more than anything, I want you to just stop and look at how his body is contorted here and how he is able to maintain balance through the shot. This is one of Cam Thomas's superpowers, in my opinion, as a basketball player. His body, his legs are like this kind of. I actually don't know how he's able to maintain that like pure upward straight up and down balance that he does through the shot when his legs are splayed like that everywhere his balance is unbelievable he has incredible incredible dexterity to be able to get shots like this up and to be able to do so with touch that's kind of what makes him such an impressive scorer it's really truly something that most nba players cannot do this with any degree of confidence, with any degree of consistency. He feels the bump and he just goes. He sells the bump as well. I don't really think it's a foul if I'm being completely transparent. But he gets through, gets the foul. Brooklyn's up still as we get into the second quarter here. This is a fun little action here to start, right? So what are we running? We're essentially running like a middle Chicago action here for Mikhail Bridges, who's starting over here. 
coming around to take a dribble handoff, right? So your Chicago or Zoom action is that you set a screen first, and then you have this man here execute a dribble handoff to the man coming around the two screens. I love Bridges' pace. I think he's really improved in this regard throughout the course of the year. He's reading. He's recognizing. Because of that immediate initial action there, Drew Holiday has to come into the paint and tag, right? Drew Holiday is guarding Cam Thomas. Thomas has to come in here as the weak side man and tag this roller. Otherwise, Mikhail can just bring Luke Cornett toward him and then eventually throw up a lob if Drew doesn't decide to tag this action. But what I want to call out here is, again, speaking to Cam Thomas's incredible scoring instincts and intelligence, he just lifts, right? He makes it so it's going to be harder for Drew Holiday to find him off of this action. Holiday ends up kind of closing out here. over to this side and then stepping up here, that's going to give Cam Thomas a runway to be able to get some space for a shot, right? And again, just the technician, the craft that Cam Thomas has in the mid-range, right? Look at this. Plants with two feet. Quick little pump. Goes up. Great touch. Great balance. Knocks the shot down, right? This is great stuff. This is... Those are the kind of sets where I really like Cam Thomas. You play him off the ball, you get him the ball, you know, off of that initial primary action, that zoom action in the middle where you got Mikhail Bridges coming downhill. You've got Cam's man off of him a little bit. He's going to have to come up and close out on him a little bit off balance potentially. Cam can get into those areas, I think, really, really well. Those are the great opportunities where you can use Cam Thomas as a high, high, high level scorer. So this one here. This time we're going to execute more of a traditional Chicago or Zoom action for Cam Thomas, right? So what's the play? So we're going to throw the ball into the top of the key here. Mikhail is going to come down here. It's a bad line. Mikhail's going to come down here. It's going to set this screen. Cam Thomas is going to come around here, get this ball, and get downhill off of this dribble handoff. So what does that do? What are you trying to accomplish with such an action, right? What you're trying to accomplish in Cam Thomas's case is you're trying to get a switch, right? Look who's guarding. You've got Luke Cornett and you've got Sam Hauser. Those two guys, probably not the ideal players to be guarding Cam Thomas, right? Drew Holiday is the guy that you want guarding Cam Thomas. So if you can force a switch, you're in a really good spot. Having said that, here's what I don't love about this. And this is something where he's going to have to improve, right? This is ultimately, with 12 seconds left on the shot clock, a contested, you know, let's call it 13 footer. Would you rather have this shot? Or would you rather him be able to hit this cross corner pass? Right? This is where the questions about Cam Thomas come in, right? If you're not going to get all the way to the basket, which I agree, he shouldn't take a shot at the rim here. Luke Cornett's right here. This Again, we've talked about Cam not being a great finisher at the rim so far throughout his career. You probably don't want him taking that shot at the rim. But also, let's say Cam Thomas is like one of the five best players in the league at this shot right here. I'd say this shot, given the contest there from Sam Hauser, that is at best, let's call it a 48% shot, right? The best players in the NBA hit that shot at like 48%. Kevin Durant, 
you know, somebody like CJ McCollum, guys like that. DeMar DeRozan hits these shots at a high level. Devin Booker, et cetera. Let's call this a 48% shot. I don't know if he's at 48 right now, but let's do that anyway. Let's call that a 0.96 points per possession shot here. If Cam's able to hit this close, hit this kick out here, where you have Drew Holiday off of him, you've got Mikhail Bridges, who's a 40% three-point shooter on open corner three-point shooters at least, that's a better shot than Cam Thomas taking this shot. This is where the lack of decision to pass the ball, I think sometimes hinders the Nets on offense. Next one here. I believe that that is the third pass in the half court there from Cam Thomas. The second one came at 524 of the first quarter. It was out of a reversal, like just on a sideline out of bounds play. Um, you know, I think that he might have hit like a same side drive and kick with 11 minutes left in the second. So this would be the fourth, actually, because he hit the one in the first half. So we're talking about he's played something like 10 minutes and he's got four half court passes here, right? And now he's just going to get the ball back. Here, he thinks he's got a mismatch, right? He's got, we're going to come up. We're going to set an empty side ball screen here. He's going to come down here and they're going to ice him. Peyton Pritchard goes over the top there. Luke Cornett just going to continue to drop. The Celtics are trying to bait him into a contested mid-range shot here, right? That's what they want. They they want Cam Thomas to take the shot that he's about to take. And he does it, right? This is a hard shot. This is not a 40% shot, in my opinion. From eight feet away, getting contested by a seven-footer, that's probably a 35 to 40% shot. What Cam Thomas does well here that I like is that he stops, doesn't take this shot, waits for his man to clear the play. By waiting for his man to clear the play, he forces Jason Tatum to come down here, forces Tatum to help. The whole point of forcing help in situations like this where the Celtics now have one, two, three, four, five guys, not only looking at Cam Thomas, but having basically their feet in the paint. I get that there are two seconds left on this shot clock, but this should be a kick out here to Mikael Bridges. And I think part of what happens with the Nets, and you can see that guys like Spencer Dinwiddie, they're just like kind of walking up this way. Mikhail's not really getting like shot prep ready, right? I think that they get a little bit, uh, I'm not going to speak for them, but like, I don't know that they expect the ball to come out in this circumstance. There's time for a kick out. I, I don't know that they're expecting the ball to come out which leads to a very stagnant style of play. Next one here. Cam Thomas calls out that he's got Tatum coming up the court. Good communication. And Tatum just gets him, right? This is tough. This is a cross match, right? But... You need somebody that can kind of hold up there, right? You need somebody that can stop somebody like Jason Tatum from just bullying his way to the rim with relative ease. Next one here. 
believe that that is his fifth pass so far in the half court. And it's for an assist. What Cam Thomas does well as a playmaker is he loves to hit that pop man. So the play here is set a screen here for Cam Thomas to come around, get the ball. And then it's going to be a rescreen. He's going to turn and rescreen, right? Comes around, gets the ball, doesn't even turn, just rescreens again. Pick and pop. Recognizes that Al Horford is very deep in drop here, right? If you'll notice here, the Celtics, they employ essentially like a next strategy here on defense where in order to get Peyton Pritchard away from the ball screen here, they're going to essentially have Drew Holiday come here and take Cam Thomas, and then they're going to ask Peyton to come out and guard Spencer Dinwiddie. Doesn't matter, though. Horford, too deep in drop. They knock down the three. It was a good job hitting the pop, man. We'll see that again later in the tape. This one here. Gets stopped by Peyton Pritchard. Hits the kick out. That is off of a scramble here that he ends up with this ball. What you'd love to see from Cam Thomas here, and this is, again, one of those things where, like, it's a little bit stagnant offensively, in my opinion, when he's out on the ball. This, in my opinion, needs to either be a catch-and-shoot three or it needs to be he's downhill taking this ball and he is moving already. He can't just be standing there, catch, and then drive. There is so much space here for him. But because he catches, stops for a second here. Look at how messy the defense was here. Where really, he's the open shooter. He just kind of needs to catch and shoot this, in my opinion. He's a good three-point shooter when he's open. Defense is scrambling, trying to find guys. NBA defenses rotate fast. They move quickly. They get through their rotations quick. Look at the difference. Just off of that little hesitation, now you've got Brown in that area. You've got Peyton Pritchard basically in front of you. You've got another guy who can help and get there. If you drive immediately in this circumstance... off of this pass, and if you're moving before you catch the ball, you're going to force help, and you're going to force somebody to collapse on you, which is going to lead to an open potential kickout opportunity for your teammate. Instead, this allows them to rotate back. Pritchard gets the little stop. This is now a contested three-point opportunity. They get another offensive rebound. And then he just misses this one, right? That's the shot he should have taken in the first place, in my opinion. Just take that. I'm good with him missing that shot. Like, that's fine. He can make that. But it's the constant, like, indecision about moving the ball that I think leads to stagnation within Brooklyn's offense when Cam Thomas is acting as more of a primary guy. This time here, we've got like kind of a high ghost screen. And this is just, again, where Cam Thomas can be special, in my opinion, right? Like, this is a ghost. We're going to come up, kind of hesitate like a screen, and then we're going to clear. We're going to come across. And I, again, want you to look at Cam Thomas's feet on this. This is where he plants. This is where he jump stops to take this pull-up mid-range shot. 
His feet are pointed toward the goddamn front row of the dude sitting courtside. His feet are closer to this dude holding this phone, taking a video of Cam Thomas, than they are to the baseline, let alone to the rim, which is ideally where you want your feet. But this is what makes him special. Guys cannot make these twisting shots. This is exceptionally fucking hard in the NBA. Guys do not do this. The ability to jump stop with your feet planted courtside away from the rim, twist in midair, get your balance, still maintain touch and knock this down. This, these are the shots where I'm like, this dude, maybe he like does have real upside to be like a genuine 30, 32 point per game scorer, right? He's at 27 already. He's great on a per minute basis. These are the shots that make you pause and go, well, okay. Like it, he cleans up the rest of his game to where he's able to play these kind of minutes consistently. He might be that good to where you, by the time he's 25, 26, you have to keep him on the court, Right. That, that kind of stuff is just absurd to me. This one here, this is off an inbounds pass. And this is just Drew Holiday emptying it out and saying, this is me, right? I'm going to drop step. I'm going to finish. I think Thomas displays a real lack of strength on things like this. Doesn't really hold his position well enough. He's not like a skin, like he's not, you know, an extremely skinny dude that doesn't have any sort of, you know, bulk to him, but just look at how Drew starts. This is where Drew starts this. Starting here and he's just going to move him back into the basket. That's not easy, but Cam makes it look easy. Unfortunately, next one here. It's another half court pass. And now he's going to kind of fake like he wants a screen. And he's very good at selling for fouls. And this is generally just like a comment on the Brooklyn Nets, right? Like the Nets can be a little bit stagnant on offense. They don't have a lot of guys that consistently break down defenders, right? This is Dennis Smith Jr. Dennis Smith, great defender. You know, unfortunately suffered a few knee injuries <clears throat> and he hasn't been able to get some of that burst back that he had when he was younger. Going to try and drive Kristaps again. There, there's just no no point here where the Celtics defense is broken and in rotation, right? And then he kind of sells for this foul. I, I, I don't really think that's a foul. I think that he's trying to sell for it the whole way, but he's good at selling. He's good at finding those little angles creating that contact. He's the one initiating that contact there. Goes to the line, knocks down a couple free throws. If you can do it, if you can griff your way into it, that works. Next one here off of a jump ball. Now you're just kind of stuck, right? This is a cross match. Tatum recognizes it. Spins back off of Thomas. It's just not not a whole lot Cam Thomas can do in that circumstance against an elite NBA scorer, and that's a problem. When you're trying to imagine Cam Thomas's game in the playoffs, is he somebody that's going to get hunted consistently? I think, as you'll see in this game, the Celtics really hunted him consistently. Spins back off. He's, if you're not going to hold up at the point of attack like that, like if you can't kind of stop him from getting where he wants to go off of that backspin, 
There's not much you can do. Next one here, Thomas, that is pass, I believe, number seven, possibly, in the half court. Ends in him taking a shot because he sees he's got this mismatch. It's another weird mid-range opportunity, right, where the Celtics are more than happy with him taking this shot, so... What's the play? Play is a screen here for Thomas to come around, try and get downhill, a drag just off of transition play, right? As you'll see again, hits the pick and pop, which is something he's very comfortable hitting, hitting that pop man off of the screen. Then he just kind of comes back out, gets the ball. I mean, look, I, I don't really think there's a great, you know, option for him here necessarily. Maybe if you're him, you can kind of fake like you're going to go up for the shot here and then again, hit that pop man, which you are very comfortable at hitting as we've shown throughout the tape. But this is, this is the shot Boston wants. Obviously this is a shot that again, best players in the NBA probably hit at 50%. This is a one point per possession shot. Average NBA offense is, you know, higher than that at this point, like 1.1, 1.12. So they're going to be good with that. Still in the second quarter. Got a mismatch. You can see here. Drew Holiday, I don't know if you saw that. You can kind of see his hand here, actually. He's saying to Tatum, like, come here, come here. He knows that the Nets are going to switch this action if they go and try and set a screen, right? So he has Tatum set a little dummy ghost action kind of thing, right? A little exchange. Now you got Cam Thomas on Tatum again. And that's the exact opposite of what you want. Front of backside exchange. Help has to come. As you'll see here, Thomas does a really good job standing up. Again, if we're going to show the bad ones, we're going to show a few of the good ones that come through, right? I think Thomas does a good job here. Just look, gets his base. Look at his base there, right? Look at his base, his feet directly under his shoulders, right? Keeps himself strong. He's able to turn with Tatum. Force the turnover, force the travel. Next one here. So as you'll see, another cross-match situation, right? You've got this man coming out to Tatum. Or no, wait. There might be a man. Yeah, you've got Jalen Brown. There. This is now his man. This is now his man on the rebound. He should be closing out. And then you've got Dinwiddie on Horford. They're all cross matched. They're all switched because they're running a switching defense. Thomas does get a body on Kristaps here at least, but he doesn't really make contact with him as you'll see. Like he tries to box out, but not really. Just never actually makes contact with them. Totally whiffs. Offensive rebound. Look, it's a hard box out. Box out. I got a seven foot three. I get it. But let's do a little bit better than that, maybe. Next one. Drew Holiday comes off the screen. I mean, I just don't like the effort here. Like, there's just not because of the way that this action sets up, right? This is essentially the Celtics coming in, setting for a double drag, right? So here, here from Kristaps. It looks like they're not switching this first action. A lot of teams 
we'll try and switch this first action and then run drop on the second action. To me, with the way that they try and guard this, it looks like they're not doing that. It looks like they're fighting, right? Cam Thomas is trying to fight over the top. You got your man here next to Cam, who I didn't see who it was, going underneath the action, right? Looks like Royce O'Neal, maybe. He's going underneath. He's not switching. Cam Thomas going over the top, not switching here. If you're not switching this action, this effort is unacceptable to me, right? Like, I, I just don't know. Maybe they are. Maybe there's miscommunication and somebody screwed up, but it looks like they're trying to fight through the action instead of like going on, going and just switching it auto. And if you're switching it auto, what you do there is he would attach himself to Horford. He would attach himself here and then you'd have this man up there. It's not what's happening here. Doesn't stay attached to Horford. Looks like they don't really recognize that it's a double drag either for what it's worth as we rewatch this. It looks like they're treating this initial action as a screen where they want Thomas to try and get over the top. And then you've got Kristaps here. I think that defender is a little bit too deep given that all three of the Celtics guys, one, two, three, can shoot. But again, if you're doing that, that is just kind of unacceptable effort, in my opinion, at the point of attack. I think they're actually going to run a similar thing here, if I remember correctly. Yeah, not a double, but they're going to run a single action here. This one, they do look like they're going to try and switch it. Right? And there's just a clear miscommunication in what the goals are here, right? You got two on the ball, still got two on the ball. Thomas is still trying to track back to where Porzingis is. I don't know if I can fully blame that on Thomas. I think that's also on, I believe that's Royce O'Neal. But it's on the Nets as a team, and it's an exchange, again, that Cam Thomas is involved in that does not go well. Got to be more engaged. Got to be a little bit more aware of what's going on. He looks a little bit bummed after that. Like, I think that he thinks that that might have been on him. Trying to see, like, if any of his teammates say something. Doesn't look like it. Ends up sending Porzingis to the line. Next up. 10 seconds left in the quarter. You got Drew Holiday here. They run a screen because they know the Nets are going to switch it. Now you've got a mismatch. You've got Cam Thomas on Kristaps. So what do they do? They decide to double immediately, right? And then they also send help from this way. And that's going to leave... Mikhail Bridges here guarding one on two because you've sent the double, right? And you're guarding one on two with Drew Holiday and Jason Tatum, both of whom can really shoot the ball. Kristaps hits that kick out cross court, which makes it very, very difficult for Mikhail to get there. Mikhail's an unbelievable defender. He gets him, forces at least like a relocation, but... I mean, again, this is this is part of having Cam Thomas on the court here. Like he can fight and he can scratch and he can claw, but it's it's hard to defend with him out there. Sometimes it's really hard to defend with him. Next one early in the third quarter, and now like you can see that they're just kind of hunting him a little bit. 
So this is a fun little double drag where it's a almost like a double slip where we're setting one there, setting Drew Holiday there. Holiday is going to filter through to the corner. And Porzingis is kind of like setting almost like a little flare, a moving flare for Drew to get to the corner. I kind of love this action. This is pretty sick. Uh, just this little like double drag into a rub flare. So you know, you've got one, got two. This man's coming around trying to get there this way. This man's kind of wrapping and like, Setting a flare that way. It's pretty sick action from the Celtics. Holiday misses, but it's another open shot. Next up. By the way here, so the Nets went on like a quick little 8-0 run in the first, you know, minute, minute 10 of the first minute 10 of the third quarter. And as I'll mention in the first clip where Cam Thomas gets a rebound, Cam Thomas hasn't touched the ball on offense yet. So this here, we're going to set a screen. We're going to switch. And that's just too easy, right? This is just too easy, right? Like we're going to set a little pin down with Drew. They say, hey, fight through it. You can see that the Nets, they're talking, right? You can see Cam, like he's opened up his hands here. He can see that they're exchanging. They're talking here, right? They're saying, hey, we're going to fight through this. They fight through. Good job. Then we're going to run just a little pin down, ball screen kind of thing. Empty side, ball screen. They decide to switch it. Too big, too easy. This is great offense by the Celtics, by the way. Like you can't can't sit here and say that the Celtics don't do a great job getting exactly what they want. I think they absolutely do, but it's not that hard either, I don't think. So this is the one where he gets the rebound here, right? He's coming down. And he's just going to take this. Like there's there's no circumstance where he's passing. We just watched him dribble for, you know, 15 seconds there, right? So it just seems like to me sometimes when he doesn't get a shot, he's like I got to take one, right? I got to go get one. I got to go create one, right? And it's just super stagnant, right? Like there's no movement here whatsoever. We got a primary ball screen action. And now they're just dribbling. Now we're just dribbling. No movement whatsoever. But like on ball stuff like this begets no movement, right? Like, cause you need to give him space because he's not like a lightning quick athlete. So you need to space the court around him, but also it's easy for the Celtics, right? Like this is a matchup, you know, we've talked about this ad nauseum. This is a matchup they're comfortable with. Like they're good with it. They're fine without Horford being on Cam Thomas. And I think they should be like, he doesn't beat them. He doesn't force any sort of help. It's a little too easy, right? So next offensive possession down the court. This is again, where he can be special, right? Like he can make these plays. Some of his change of pace stuff is truly ridiculously impressive. He just juked Drew Holiday, one of the best defenders in the NBA, absolutely out of his shoes. Just crossed him into the nether nether region here, right? And part of this, to be clear, is that Drew is anticipating a screen for sure. That's a sick change of pace and change of direction move. It truly is. Like we're going to go behind the back and then just go and then we're going to finish at the rim. It's tremendous. It's tremendous stuff here from Cam Thomas.
Having said that, we're also now. At the point where I think that he's had eight half court passes and we are six minutes into the third quarter. It's not ideal offense, in my opinion. It's just not. He goes, gets the rebound, comes down. Double drag and semi-transition. He's getting the cross match on Porzingis. And again, there's just like no rotation there, really. Like, no, he doesn't force any help, right? He gets the double drag. So we'll draw it real quick. Double drag here. Celtic switch it. They're good with Cam coming around here, trying to score. They just communicate through it and. They're ready to help if Kristaps needs help. He doesn't. Like, he can't beat Porzingis off the bounce here. And, you know, Drew is not in a space where he's uncomfortable closing out from that distance. He cuts off the drive. It's a nice little up and under from Spencer Dinwiddie. But, again, it's just really, really, really stagnant offense uh, when Cam Thomas is out there for the Brooklyn Nets. It's a, it's a problem. That is to be sure. So now they come down. And Thomas just kind of loses track of Drew Holiday there. Not totally sure what happens here, right? Like he's guarding him, guarding him. Kind of throws like a pass fake that, you know, again, sends Cam Thomas like into the first row there. It's just not great. It's not great. Uh, not great across the board. Is It's the only way I can say it. Like it's bad basketball. It's not. It's not great basketball. Next up here. Again, the thing, the places that I like Cam Thomas are not when he is on the ball. I like him as a secondary option off of the ball. Where you're going to see here, this is just an easy, quick little screen, right? Bridge is going to come around. Drew Holiday helping at the nail, right? Porzingis in help. Or Porzingis and drop. If you can get the defense into rotation, that's where Cam Thomas can be effective, right? So here you're basically going to force like an X out where Tatum has to go here. Holiday has to kind of cross back. And that just leaves a really beautiful open floater for Cam Thomas. Again, it's like not the easiest shot in the world, right? Late contest from Jalen Brown. Floater like that. It's, I'd still say that's a sub 50% shot, even for like the best players in the league. But he can make them. Next up here, coming down to the end of the third quarter. Nets are... Down five in this game, by the way. It's a close game. And again, you get them downhill on the ball. The places where Cam Thomas are good so far in this video. Transition, like semi-transition, and off the ball as a scorer. Uh, if he has to like create genuine half-court offense... After the defense is set, I think that's where the problem comes in. And again, by the way, not a super easy shot, right? So we're coming down. Going to try and confuse the Celtics with this like double screen action here on the ball. Mikhail's going to filter to the corner, get a rescreen there from Dayron Sharp. And again, just look at how he's planting his feet here. Like he's planting 
and his feet are like pointed this way and he's readjusting in midair to be able to make this shot. It's a hard shot and he's capable of making them, but you just don't know how long that's going to last uh, or how efficient it can be with such shots. This one, they get a switch on to Sam Hauser and he's like, okay, I can take Sam Hauser and I'm going to brick a three point opportunity. So, you know, here, this is coming down off of a defensive rebound. Going to set like a little exchange here with Spencer Dinwiddie. And then we're going to set an empty side screen action. And that's just a pop. And they're trying to get Cam Thomas into open space. That's just not an easy shot. It's not an easy shot. He probably makes that 30% of the time, maybe less, 28% of the time. But because he's not like capable of like really breaking those guys down and like forcing help from the defenders, like it's been very rare in this video. We've gone through two and a half quarters now, almost three quarters, where he's forced help right? He's a great shot maker over contested opportunities, but he's not forcing a lot of help, right? Makes for tough opportunities. Makes for really, really tough opportunities. Next one here. I think this is literally the next possession. Got Sam Hauser on him again. Gets that little running floater. And as you'll see, this is a fun little set because it's basically like a middle Chicago where you've got O'Neal and Dayron coming around. And I think Dayron's going to give him the ball in a handoff, right? Handoff into a rescreen. He tells him, no, like, I don't want the rescreen. He sends him away. Sends him through the play because he's got the matchup that he wants, right? He he wants these mismatches, but I don't know that he's capable of beating them, right? So we're watching again. I wouldn't say he really beats Sam Hauser there. Like that's a hard running hook shot. Like th those are not those are not the easiest opportunities in the world, even for great offensive players. They're not. Then this one here, he wants the foul call, doesn't get it. Not really a great set necessarily or anything, but it's another miss. Tough spot though. As you can see, what they're kind of doing here is Just kind of spacing out for him a little bit, right? I actually don't totally know what happened here because there was some sort of break, like right before it, where it almost looks like they're setting up. to try and get like Mikael Bridges. If you're Mikael Bridges here, I'm not totally sure why you don't just like stay in that corner, but he's coming through. I think we've got someone spacing that way maybe. And you're just kind of trying to create an open area. Nice spacing out toward the three point line. Yeah. It's a tough shot, tough opportunity. There's nothing you can really do about that. Next one here. couple of fun things to note on this play. The Celtics. That is, is it Lonnie Walker. Or is it Dennis Smith? I think it's Dennis Smith. They use Dennis Smith to basically run like a one, two ball screen, but because Dennis Smith is kind of a non shooter in theory, the Celtics have cross matched him with Luke Cornett. 
thinking that they can just keep Cornette as the help man around the basket. Thomas does a pretty good job here. Loses the ball on the way, which isn't ideal necessarily, but eventually recognizes that the pop man is open. You'd probably like to see him get it to him sooner, but he lost the ball. It's fine. It's a good play. Now this one, again, like I, I just don't know what the Nets are trying to accomplish when Cam Thomas is on the court because you can't really switch with them because as we've seen, he's gotten hunted mismatches. But, you know, this is one where it looks like they're trying to play a drop. He goes over here, right? And then you've got the drop defender here. Again, I, I just kind of don't think the effort is good enough here, if I'm being completely honest. Uh, like, he's just kind of hopping around, like jumping around, not really fighting through this in the way that you need to. Like, you watch somebody like the guy who's got the ball right now, Drew Holiday, watch this guy fight through screens. Watch him get over the top of screens, get those rear view contests, right? Thomas just kind of hopping around, doesn't get back into the play, gets upset when it's a... Easy lob. I'm not saying it's all on him, but that was not an ideal one. This one again. Hits the pop, man. It's a good pass. Again, this is just super simple, you know, two one high screen action, right? Love it. It's it's a good offensive scheme and set to do. Uh, just missed the shot. This one here. This is coming up the court. We're going to set a little action here. We're going to filter through to the corner there, I believe, with Dorian Finney-Smith, right? Yep. So we set that screen. We've got, and this is the problem with having like a non-shooter like Dennis Smith on the court here, right? Like he doesn't want to necessarily step set up behind the three-point line, but you know, it's probably the right spacing. There's just never really a chance here for an open shot, right? Like, really, this just kind of needs to be like a pop pass, in my opinion. Like, he's closed down. This is going to be a tough contested shot no matter what. He's closed down. I think this just kind of needs to be a pop pass. Or you hit Dennis Smith now when he's getting downhill toward the rim. And then you force help, right? And Dennis can make those passes. Dennis, former point guard, continues to be a point guard, I guess. It's just a really hard shot. It's not great offense, in my opinion. Again, he's not really collapsing defenses and making passes off of collapsed defenses. So here, now we're into the point of the show where we're going to get a lot of hunted Cam Thomas in mismatches, right? So this time... Celtics set like a, I don't know what you want to call that, a one one three one ball screen, right, with Jason Tatum. Now they've got the mismatch they want. Cash, right? That's just not a, it's too easy. It's too easy for Tatum. Can't get up high enough to contest. Next one here, another one. They just auto switch it. Tatum's going to get into the lane. Too easy. Truly just too easy at some stage, right? And, and this isn't even like bad effort on, I mean, the recovery isn't great, but like it's just physical limitation on some level, in my opinion. Like it's just really hard to manage. Another one here, right? 
Another screen coming around. I'm like they sort of kind of blitz it. I mean, that's a open three for Jalen Brown. This is just Ram pick and roll, right? So Ram pick and roll is you have someone set a screen for the screener to come up, set a screen here. He's going to go around and try and make a play. The Nets. El Bridges kind of pauses there, puts they put two on the ball, right? Drew attacks. It's the right pass. It's just a little out of Kristaps's range to be able to go up directly and finish. I mean, that's a great shot, again, that they're able to find. So Tatum here again on Jalen Brown. I don't even really know what to call this like defensive structure, right? So again, very simple, Ram pick and roll. Come up. Tatum's going to go. He's going to hit the pick and roll man here. Now you've got a heavy cross match with Kristaps on Cam Thomas, who I think does a pretty good job there, boxing out Kristaps, by the way. But like you're just in all sorts of rotation, right? Like giving up a shot at the rim. You're in all sorts of rotation. Again, I do want to call out. I'm going to call it the bad stuff. Look at this. Gets low. Actually does get contact onto Kristaps. Gets him out of the play. It's good recovery work. Good work by Cam Thomas there. Again, this time he just like kind of goes to blitz the ball. I'm kind of assuming that this was like a call in the huddle and that he didn't just like kind of yell and kind of like do this on his own. The reason I say that as well is that you can see here Jacques Vaughn, who is this guy here. He's kind of pointing with his finger, if you can tell. I'll rewind it one more time here from the top. He's kind of pointing with his finger to go blitz the ball. So he goes to blitz the ball, and I mean, it just seems not ideal to me to do that. But then after... Thomas goes, splits the ball. It kind of works, but no rebound. Uh, th this is absolutely Cam Thomas's man here. Uh, Drew Holiday at this point. Uh, you've got one man there. You've got Sharp touching. You've got Spencer there. And then Mikhail is out on Jason Tatum. Uh, th this, this effort, again, just not quite there for me. Uh, it's unfortunate, but true. Next one, he's going to go get the rebound, bring it up the court. Quick little screen, rescreen. And he's just kind of hunting and he airballs, right? Now we're just kind of hunting and praying at this point. Um, this is a screen. It's going to turn into a rescreen, right? Come back around. It's just tough. He can't like really beat anybody right now. They switch it, heavily contested. Next one, another screen. This one slipped. Now you're in like a four on three, wide open Jalen Brown three. Right, so what are we looking at? A, awesome from Drew Holiday to kind of faint this and then short roll knowing that for the last, you know, four or five possessions, they've been putting two on the ball knows that that's going to create like a beautiful four on three opportunity here. Right. So got one, two, three nets. You've got 
one, two, three, and then four. The man with the ball is the most dangerous. Drew brings the man on ball with him, gets the open shot there. And then on top of it, I get that this is a tough closeout. It, it, it it's a hard it's a hard box for Cam Thomas on Kristaps. I do get that, but Kristaps just kind of moves him out of the way. Not ideal. Next up, kind of a quick little double drag. Again, not quite good enough to be able to finish at the rim yet. I don't even know if I want to call this like a double drag. It's more just like a stagger on ball. Yeah, he just, he, he can't really turn the corner on guys is the issue. Like he's not quite quick enough to be able to do so. He needs to win with craft, which is why I like him off the ball more, where when you get him the ball with a bent defense, he can do things. It's not as important for him to necessarily have that speed uh, to create this one here. Stops, pops, drills the three. Very capable of that in transition. Right. Stops, drills it. Not much more to say about that. Then this one is the next possession down the court. I th think that like they're so look they're they're four on five here right now somebody is like trailing behind the play eventually he has to get cross matched onto Jalen Brown and Jalen's just like nah stop I'm good I'm gonna stop I'm going to create this opportunity I'm going to pull up from three way beyond the line against Cam and I'm just gonna fire because I don't think he can contest the shot unfortunately cash and then finally here last possession this is just all iso and he can't really get by peyton pritchard but makes this running floater shot anyway so there's there's just not really even anything to break down he's just kind of going i will say again like you know very creative in the way that he is capable of using his footwork to maintain balance. I mean, he is straight up and down with just like a minor fade, what fade away there to get some beautiful elevation and get away from the contest. But like, it's just not, not all that close really, unfortunately. So That's the that's the Cam Thomas breakdown here. Uh, in total, I counted 36 points scored against Thomas, either via straight up just getting hunted or via missed offensive rebound box outs or like kind of confusion. You know, not always his fault, but sometimes his fault. He also missed 13 shots in this game, but went for 27 points and had three assists, right? You look at the numbers, 27 points, five rebounds, three assists. You think this is great. This is all good. He played really well, but I think when you dive deeper into the game, it does get to be a little bit problematic for Cam. So far, Brooklyn this season, when Cam Thomas is on the court, uh, has scored 116.5 points per 100 possessions in the minutes where cam is not played they're at 118.2 uh their defensive rating when he's on the court 118.1 their defensive rating when he's off 115.02 i will note the defensive rating number he played a lot of his minutes without nick claxton early in the season so i don't think you should take a ton away necessarily from the defensive number particularly but i do think the offensive number is interesting given the stagnation that seems to occur when he has the ball in his hands. Uh, just in general, I kind of tried to look up a few other numbers here while we were talking today. And it's, 
he he's a he's an interesting player to track moving forward. And I'm fascinated by him because the other piece of what we talked about here, in spite of all of the flaws, is that he's a very capable scorer. He's a very capable creator with the ball in his hands. He can get through a lot of impressive moments as a shot maker. Like that shot where he has his feet literally turned toward the opposite sideline from where the rim is and turns his body in midair, realigns and knocks down that shot over Jalen Brown. Those are shots that very few guys in the NBA can make. Very, very few guys in the NBA can make. That's what makes him so intriguing. And plus, he's so young still. Like, Cam Thomas is still just turned 22 years old. There's a lot of offensive potential here. But he does continue to miss passing reads in favor of mid-range jumpers. The defense is a real concern, obviously. He's a very flawed player at the moment. And I'm really interested just to see how Brooklyn handles him as an asset because obviously they're in a circumstance where he's averaging 27 points per game. He's in his third year, which means that this summer, theoretically, he could be a guy that gets an extension. And I don't know how comfortable I would be with that, given the defensive concerns at this point, but given what the number would likely be as a you know, potential 20 plus point per game scorer. I'm really interested to see him come back. I'm really interested to see how he grows throughout the year. I'm interested to see how Brooklyn utilizes him throughout the year. Do they keep using him as they did early in the season as a real creator for their offense, something of an engine, or do they use him a little bit more sparingly? Does he come off the bench a little bit more? Uh, That is certainly something that occurred uh, in the first game of the season. If I remember correctly, he came off the bench. So Great scorer, has some flaws to figure out in his game. Not a guy worth giving up on, I think, for sure. But absolutely a guy that I think still has some work to do in order to reach his fullest potential. So that's the Cam Thomas breakdown. Let me know in the comments who you want to see next. I have a couple of ideas. I kind of want to do Tyrese Halliburton in order to kind of cleanse some of the lack of ball movement that I watched with Brooklyn today. Uh, Halliburton's been one of the best offensive players in the league because of that, like unselfishness, that ball movement, that transition driving ability. Uh, but let me know who you guys want to see next, because I will absolutely do it. I'm going to start doing some college stuff as well. Some G league stuff. I grabbed some Ron Holland tape. I was debating doing him later this week as well. Uh, let me know who you want to see subscribe to the channel until next time. We'll talk soon.